Hello, welcome to the discussant interview session as we celebrate ABFA Awards 2023. My name is Oiza. I'm a voiceover artist and programs manager at ABVA. I am your host and I have joined with me to discuss the topic, the audio creative industry and economic growth. Africa's finest international speaker and moderator, who has featured on stages around the world. She's an adept storyteller and an experienced nonprofit board member, currently on the board of the Action Foundation. She's no other than Josephine Karyanjahi. Welcome, Josephine. It's good to have you. Thanks for having me and happy International Podcast Month to everybody who is watching, listening in, joining You're from welcome. across Africa and around the world. Thank you, APVA. We've been looking forward to this day for so long and it's finally here. I'm so excited to get into this conversation. Yes, it is. You're welcome once again. And uh, we personally are excited to be having this uh, initiative to celebrate audio creatives and their work, all of the things, the efforts they are putting into uh, portraying Africa as the continent. All right, let's get started. So um, just to set the mood, can you give us a few tips on uh how you see the audio creative industry contributing to job creation and skill development. All right. So I think one of the things that you can't escape if you're African or you're from Africa or invested in Africa in one way or another, that the continent is a younger continent than most of the rest of the world. And the number one concern that I have and many of us have is what are we going to do to make sure that Everybody who needs to work, express themselves, have creative outlets, has an opportunity to do that. So we've had a really, really bumpy few years. Um, part of it is because mm. of the, the COVID-19 pandemic. Part of it is because of the economic crisis that's ensued. And when, you know, at the time of the COVID crisis, we said, um, you know, at the beginning of it, we said when the whole um, world coughs, Africa catches a cold. And that's the case when it comes to the growth of our creative industry across the continent. Now, that means that when there's an opportunity that's engaging creatives in other markets and things are booming and people are getting to be heard and seen across different platforms, Africa then starts to get much more access and exposure and opportunities. But now what we're seeing is as opportunities across the economic board are shrinking in some ways, there's a cost of living crisis, a lot of the opportunities that opened up around the world are not as open as they were. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not all mm. doom and gloom. I think there's a real mm -hmm. moment here. So when Africa Pod first started in 2019, we never dreamed that, you know, we would be kind of walking into a big storm. We started with the hope of bringing people together and creating community around podcasting. In the time since then, we've discovered that people across Africa, like what we've known, are incredible storytellers. That people who are creating nonfiction are really great at creating factual, investigative work, uh, well-researched work that really gets to the heart of the matter. What we found also is that podcasting creates that opportunity for us to be heard in a very unique way across Africa. And so what we ended up doing as a company is really thinking through who did we want to work with? How do we make our work more representative of across Africa? and how do we do this with the support of individuals, companies, investors, and grant makers who are also invested in the African podcast space? So the question of how do we see sort of the industry is that before podcasting is not new, it had already developed in so many markets. There were so many podcasts, even African podcasts that were so you know, engaged. They had several seasons of production. But what we found is that they were not as connected as they could be. And so we made it our mission to focus on the African podcaster because remember, 
an African podcaster, like many creatives, can create multiple shows, multiple products, connect with multiple audiences, and take our story around the world and even beyond. So that's where we've invested our time in the people around African podcasting, whether it's crew uh, and people who are the talent in different Africa Podcast Day and African Podcast Festival engagements and people who are presenting and creating everything behind the scenes, whether it's from original podcasting research where we've engaged African scientists, make sure that people can get these messages as um, people who are engaged in messaging and creating content that really speaks to people across platforms. So everyone we've worked with okay. has been connected to the continent and that's the key. It's really saying intentionally, whether we are connecting with people who are working in Nigeria or South Africa, Botswana, Mozambique, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, uh, DRC, Egypt, that all African creatives have a role to play in the upcoming and growing audio industry across Africa. And not just audio, audio and visual, because remember these two are connected and we know that, yeah. you know, if you woke up today and you didn't listen to Afrobeats, are you even alive? You know, that's really where we're seeing a lot of the African sound, that it is going global, that we are teaching the world many ways of engaging with the voice and podcasts, and mm -hmm. that can only grow for years to come. Okay. Now, uh, that was very uh, expository. Now, having established this um, sort of foundation, uh, how do you think that governments and policymakers can support the growth of the audio creative industry through making favorable policies and incentives and, you know, other, other methods? Well, I can't be you know on this stage and this platform without recognizing the incredible role that um, you know government-led initiatives have created. Let me start with the earliest example. So for me, um, and this will really tell you which decade I grew up in. I watched uh, Urtna. Urtna was the television station that would broadcast African music, African culture across uh, public television. Um, and I grew up in Kenya, so that's what I watched. Ojna was not, it was funded you know, through various initiatives, but it was supported by governments deciding that we did want, need to connect across Africa. There are so many initiatives since then, but I'll talk about uh, two specifically. One is um, what the African Continental Free Trade Agreement has done in terms of enabling cross-border trade. So people are talking about, you know, if we're sitting in Nairobi and I'm sitting in uh, Lagos or Jobag, how do we get goods and services to flow across? How do we overcome the currency barriers that exist across Africa? How do we connect? So because of this agreement that's been accelerated across Africa, there's an opportunity there for creative industries to think about how to work across borders. We did that um, early mm -hmm. on. We did the discovery tour, for example, of African podcasting, where we engaged with groups of podcasters who are based in Zambia, Kenya, Nigeria, and South Africa to create initial conversations and connect with them. What people don't know is that when we connected with the different groups in these countries, there were in-person events that were convened by these groups these events had uh, opportunities for people to engage local products and services, to connect with co-working spaces, to connect with ongoing initiatives that were based in those countries. And also at a time when people were not investing in podcasts and podcasters, it provided a much needed jump of enthusiasm, energy, connection across these countries. With the African Continental Free Trade Agreement already being implemented, that can only grow. And because we know, for example, that we are stronger when we work across continents, across Africa, this is even more critical so that we are not waiting for people to come from another continent to show us how to trade products and services in between. It is an opportunity for us to learn how to work together across languages, across experiences, 
and also, and most importantly, to really understand how we create and how we can sustain the creative energy and not just energy, but productivity, investment, engagement, and also really learning what our audiences want and responding to those needs in kind. The second okay. um, so initiative that I was going to talk about is something that's really new um, and across Kenya we've been hearing about, um, also we hear about in other countries. So talent development from the, not just from the creative sector, but also the sports and culture sector. So now we are looking forward to hearing what that implies for people who are in the creative industry, who are in sports, and really understanding what that looks like from a country level. As you know, Africa Podfest is based in Kenya, but we know that some of the lessons from these talent development opportunities may be an opportunity for people to learn how to work with each other in these countries and also across the continent. Of course, we ask our governments to think about including our voices in development of these programs. Otherwise, what's the point? So I'll take that as one of the examples of uh, private par public partnerships that have sort of contributed to economic growth within the audio creative sector. Are there other examples that, are, that have been successful that you want to give? So I think one of the best examples I've seen is, you know, a lot of voice talent and also people who are new to podcasting are coming from the ad agency world. So advertising um, has a lot of people who are creatives engaged in commerce, engaged in creating brand awareness and so many areas. And so what I've seen that's really interesting is ad agencies who are now engaging with society and culture development issues. So for example, they're engaging in advocacy, they're strengthening the capacity of um, different uh, causes to be able to tell their messages. So it's this beautiful connection between um, what is happening in the ad world and also what's happening in the impact messaging world. And so you have this really great opportunity to expand that across the continent so that what makes sense for business also makes sense for doing what, what we need across Africa and across the African diaspora. The other area, and that's so exciting, is what we've seen with Nollywood being a real powerhouse for what we know and imagine about Africa and how Africans enjoy life, experience life, fight for um, what they care about. So what we've learned from Nollywood specifically is how to make films. In many ways, a lot of people have learned how to tell an African story by watching Nollywood films. Yes, it's from country to country very different, but what that um, development of talent, that uh, example in terms of investment has created is an opportunity for people to see what could become at scale an industry that engages many people across Africa. There's also a lot of learning in terms of audio that's you know, translated over into the podcast industry. And what we found um, in our research last year, for example, in South Africa, is a lot of people are starting to think about how they can engage with commercial banks and other lenders to really invest in their creative ventures. So to the extent that that wow. could grow in the coming years, we're really excited to see what the commercial um, investment world has to do with the creative financing world. And there's some exciting partnerships that can come from that. That, that seems like uh, a lot going on already and, and a lot to come. Okay, uh, so my next question is on copyright protection. How can or how would you advise that um, the audio creative industry addresses issues of copyright protection and piracy to ensure a sustainable economic environment, especially for the creators? So I think there's two parts to this. One, I think a lot of creators need to really understand what they are creating and what their rights are with respect to intellectual property. If you don't know what you own, how can you fight for it? How can you um, create measures hmm. to outline it? How can you register the trademarks? How can you register your name if you're a creative or the name of your business? Those are really critical learning blocks. There are free resources. The World Intellectual Property Organization regularly connects with um, creators who want to learn 
how to protect their intellectual property. There's an opportunity there for creatives to really up their learning and skills in this area. That being said, it's a new topic for a lot of creatives. If I woke up today, picked up my cell phone and created a podcast, I think one of the things I would be thinking of is how can I first get my podcast on the ground and then now start thinking of intellectual property? What we are saying is these go hand in hand. We want to also say if you are a consumer, you're an audience member and your creative says, hey, there's an opportunity to support my work by my work. Consider the work that goes into these productions and invest financially in supporting the creatives who you love, who inspire you, and who really carry you through all the difficult and also all the light moments of life. And also there's a chance there for our governments, regional bodies to include intellectual property education as part of the curriculum when engaging with creatives, when engaging with audio creatives, especially because these are institutions that have a wide reaching network and an opportunity to do that. Ultimately, we all have to connect the dots. So there's an opportunity there through learning what creatives who you admire have done. A lot of the creatives who are making their mark in Africa and across the world have engaged with intellectual property issues. They've done registration work. A lot of them are trying to teach other creatives. Look for those classes as well. Think about investing in your business and also thinking of what you create as a service, as something that really connects you with your audience and something that you want to see beyond time. Unfortunately, this isn't easy to implement. And there's a lot of people who say and are very discouraged by seeing what other creatives have experienced when they try and get um, you know, valued for their intellectual property. Sometimes there are these cases you hear about a creative not getting financially beneficial, you know, from the financial benefit from their work or having an intermediary not give them what they need. So those are real cases. We're not saying there's a, there's a kind of a magical world where these things don't exist. It's an opportunity for who we are as creatives to come together. And I think days like today where we celebrate podcast and voice talent across the continent and across the world. That's one day to really bring that front and center. And I'm so glad you asked the question, um, you know, that allows us to really think, what can we do differently? How can we engage in a way that um, allows us to honor the work that we do and the way that we create across yeah. the world? Mm -hmm. That's very profound. Thank you for that, Josephine. Okay, as we round off, my, my final question will be, how can the audio creative industry adapt and innovate in the face of evolving technologies and changing consumer preferences? Uh, I remember this reminds me of uh, a conversation I have with fellow voiceover artists, and we talk about how AI is taking over uh, the voiceover industry and all of that. And, you know, people share their fears. So how do you think that creators in the audio creative industry can further adapt and you know, innovate to, to suit the terrain? So I think the one thing that will carry us through what's happening technologically is we talked about learning and being in that growth mindset and saying, yes, I use my voice to be my craft, to be my livelihood. How do I learn how to continue improving how I access technology, how I deploy my voice, the kinds of contracts I'm signing, the kinds of opportunities I have access to. But the really big thing about innovation is, you know, somebody talks about success, you know, how would I succeed in, you know, having a career in voice, having a career that deploys my podcast ability. And the difference between, I think, innovators and people who are waiting for others to innovate is really that purposefulness. Yes, you're sitting in the room together, but do you know why you do what you do? Do you know why you wake up in the morning and open your mouth and really practice, use your gift, your talent? If you're not aware of that purpose, it's very difficult to also now think, how do I then innovate? Because that purpose is beyond trends. It's beyond tools. 
it's beyond you know what somebody else tells you you can or cannot do that purpose is unique to you and then the other thing remember a lot of us in africa are aware of our ancestors and people who have gone before us we know the challenges they've experienced we know how hard they have fought for us to be where we are now we know what mistakes mm-hmm. they have made we know because we tell these stories in our families and our communities so there's a lot of knowledge there's a lot of community knowledge that we are losing unfortunately because of you know the way the world is developing but there's also a lot that has been captured and that is still with our elders with people who have become custodians of knowledge in our communities there's a lot that we can draw on in terms of strength remember a lot of our countries are quite young 60 years 65 years 70 years is quite young in a world where we're talking about you know countries that have been existent for you know hundreds of years as well and so there's an opportunity there to really put ourselves in perspective and really drive towards what our purpose is and where we've come from and where we are heading and the thing is you know people talk about i'm going to get ahead i'm going to do this but without community without connections without building genuine and authentic networks not necessarily just based on taking but really what can you build together without that i think we're still going to be waiting for somebody to tell a story of what new tool what new trend is coming up and we'll forget ourselves yeah. and one of the things that people are looking to us as africans is to learn to grow to you know see what we are innovating about um a lot of people are still shocked on how we distribute for example our podcasts it's not necessarily on podcast platforms it's where your audience is if your audience is you know somewhere where you're going to burn a cd and have someone get on a motorbike and take it to the next place where someone else will play it that's your audience that's your network if it's on uh you know a social media platform like whatsapp or telegram that's not necessarily a podcast platform but it's a way of distribution so there's so many areas that people yeah. are trying to learn from us and that's just the surface that's what you can see imagine if we really looked within ourselves valued ourselves and really took that to the next level imagine where we would be imagine that that's a world i see mm-hmm. for voice and podcast talent really for creatives across africa and even for people who are not engaged in the creative sector you can support our work by reminding us where we've come from and helping us craft our way to where we need to be wow that was massive and we've come to the end of the discussant interview thank you so much for your time just feen karanjahi we really appreciate you at abba and i personally appreciate you for your time you've shared knowledge and you know what they say about knowledge uh, not not uh, is it's priceless you cannot buy it thank you so much for sharing with us today and thank you for joining us in this discussant and interview uh with Josephine Karanjahi on the topic the audio creative industry and economic growth my name is Oiza i'm a voice over artist and programs manager at Apva and uh, of course the ceremony continues i'll see you some other time bye mm-hmm.